I'm done the introduction and the presentation uh, gets rolling, we'll have the other people joining us. So welcome everybody to Ergonomics 101, Working From Home, uh, presented by Robin Hansberger of Hansberger Physio Plus and the Rogue uh, Public Library. Uh, so before I begin, I just wanted to introduce myself and and the speaker today. So my name is Jason and I'm an information and programming specialist at the library. So uh, you may have uh, seen me in last month's program with uh, estate planning and also do book clubs and some of the technical programs online, uh, such as 3D printing and some of the children's programs as well. Uh, so I would uh, please help me to welcome Robin Hansberger. I'll give a nice round of applause for everybody. Hi, everyone. Here. Uh, so I have a little short introduction about Robin here. Uh, so Robin is the head of business development and operations at Hansberger Physio Plus. Uh, and if you don't know, Hansberger Physio Plus has an office uh, in Aurora that's really close to the library. It's uh, pretty much across the street. Uh, one street across. Uh, so Robin graduated from the University of Guelph with a marketing management co -op. She is an athlete and an adventure enthusiast at heart, uh, enjoying the outdoors, exploring new places, and trying out new recipes are uh, some of her favorite hobbies. Robin has a passion for problem solving and supporting su the success of the team uh, that she works with. Uh, one of Robin's biggest strengths is her ability to network and build relationships. Her passion for innovation and partnering for mutual success has allowed for the expansion of Hansberger Physio Plus and their unique service offerings. Uh, her recent focus is helping those who may be working from home. So I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about this presentation because I've been sometimes working from home uh, when I'm not at the library. And I've been battling pain in my neck and back and getting massages almost every week. Uh, but her focus is to help uh, us who've been working from home uh, to create an at-home office that enhances productivity, reduces pain, and helps you accomplish your work-related goals. So again, I'm super excited. So please uh, give me, uh, help me again and uh, give me another round of applause for Robin. And I'll let Thank her uh, take it away from so here. Thank you so much, Jason. I really appreciate that. And one thing for everybody on the call tonight, um, we are recording the session. So please don't feel like you have to scribble away notes. Um, we will definitely be sharing a copy of the slides and the recording with everybody following the presentation. So without further ado, I will try to keep on a tight schedule. Um, there's a lot of information in here. So at any time, if you have a question or something that I'm saying doesn't make sense, please feel free to type it into the chat function on this Zoom call and Jason will relay the questions back to me and I will do my absolute best to answer them. If they do happen to be a little bit more complex, I will follow up with you individually after the session um, and try to provide some more um, specific insights to the problems you may be having. Um, so without further ado, just a quick little background on our company. Um, Hansberger Physio Plus is all about building a better you. Whether you have a new injury, you wanna take your game to the next level, or you're simply finding it harder to move than you used to, we are committed to helping you feel better, live better, perform better, and for the sake of this presentation, work better. We believe that personal empowerment is key to living a healthy life. As Jason was mentioning, we have a clinic in Aurora. We've been in Aurora for over, I believe it's 34 years now, which is pretty exciting. Um, we're over on Temperance Street um, and have a lot of relationships uh, within the community um, and try to give back in a lot of ways. We also have Cube uh, Clinic in Markham, in Burlington and in Stouffville and a number of corporate clinics. Um, we work with Apotex, Sanofi Pasteur, the Toronto Cricket Club, Oven Bird Golf Club seasonally, and now uh, latest is the William Othler Health System Group out in Peel. So our team's pretty big. Um, we have 10 registered physiotherapists, four registered massage therapists, four certified athletic therapists, two personal trainers, one osteopath, one certified athletic trainer, a strength and conditioning coach, two Pilates trainers, and four incredible administrative professionals that truly uh, make my world go round. 
Um, so the focus of today is all about ergonomic balance and taking control of your health. If I can not stress that enough, uh, the two are slow, closely connected, um, and you'll really start to see that throughout this presentation. So ergonomics, what is it? Ergonomics is the study of people's efficiency in their working environment. A working environment could be anything, whether you drive Uber, uh, whether you work at the library, uh, standing up, filing books um, on your feet, whether you work in a lab, whether you are working in a kitchen, wherever you work is your working environment and considered your workstation. So this is really geared towards computer-based work and things like that. But if you do work in another environment, let's say you drive a truck or um, you work in a classroom um, or you're teaching virtually, that might be a thing as well. So I'm gonna, if you have some of those circumstances, please let me know and I'll try to cater some of my, my advice. Why should we care about ergonomics? Every single day we use our muscles, ligaments, and joints to lift, carry, sit, stand, walk, move, and work. These repetitive tasks or variety of movements can put too much demand on our bodies, which can make you feel pain or discomfort, which can lead to acute or chronic long-term injury. And that's something that we really want to avoid. So again, we are all about helping you feel better, live better, perform better, and work better. That's really the focus today. Whatever work is for you, that's what we're going to focus on. Guys, work shouldn't hurt. We really need to prioritize ergonomics to prevent more serious injuries called musculoskeletal disorders or MSDs, which can include carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis, rotator cuff injuries, which affects the shoulder, elbow related issues. I'm not even going to try to sound out that word because I'll never get it right. Trigger finger. How many of you guys have had that when working with a mouse? I know I have um, muscle strains and low back injuries. So although you may not have access to a proper desk setup like you would in the office, you can still have an ergonomically sound work from home workstation. So one acronym I really, really love is BAN. BAN is standing for balance, adjustable and neutral. And you're gonna really see a lot of those themes throughout the rest of this presentation. We really wanna make sure our body has balance. So what's happening to the right is happening to the left. We wanna make sure we're adjustable. So whether we're standing up, uh, we're moving around um, or, and the tools in our workstation are adjustable, but we also really wanna keep a neutral body. A neutral body uses less energy, which really helps to, uh, combat injury. So ergonomics. So how many people have, have looked at themselves working? Probably not that many. Have anyone ever taken a picture of you working or has anyone ever commented on your posture? My team comments on my terrible posture all the time. So I probably look a lot more like the gentleman on the left than the lady on the right. Um, and the gentleman on the left could experience foggy brain, strained neck, sore shoulders, heart disease, overproductive pancreas, colon cancer, weak abs, disc damage, tight hips, soft glutes, all from sitting incorrectly in his workstation. So some of those may sound pretty severe, but those are long-term impacts of body related issues in your workstation. So like I said, neutral body uses less energy, which reduces injuries, which allows us to live a lot more productive and empowered life. Um, so we're really going to kind of dive into that now. There's so many checklists out there in terms of ergonomic checklists, and they're great if you have a perfect body. If you don't, there's a lot of stuff in these checklists that might not be able to be achieved or you might not have the tools to set it up perfectly. So today I'm really gonna focus on some at-home hacks that don't need to cost a lot of money to really make it a more ergonomically, works, um, ergonomically friendly workstation, excuse me. So we're gonna start with the chair. This is probably the most important tool. And if you're gonna start anywhere, you start from the chair and you build around you. So I'm really gonna take some details into discussing the benefits of setting up your chair properly. So first things first is we wanna adjust the height of your chair so your elbows are at the same height as the keyboard. 
So you see the picture on the left, or sorry, on the right here, um, with the check mark, the green check mark. That's what you want to achieve with your elbows. Um, and, and that's really, really important. You don't want them to be too far down. You don't want them to be too far up or anything like that. Now, if you can't adjust the height of your chair or the height of your desk, using a cushion or a seat support under your bum is a good idea. It will help bring the height of your body up and achieve that neutral position. Hear that word again, neutral, um, in that band acronym, neutral um, elbow. It's really important to rest your feet flat on the ground if you cannot, and if you cannot reach, use a foot rest. I'm five foot one. Um, my feet never touch the floor uh, fully. And I mean feet flat on the floor, not your toes touching, not your heels touching, feet flat on the floor. Um, so that's, that's the next piece. Um, again, that creates a neutral body um, and uses less energy. Thighs should be parallel to the floor and the back of your knees clear of the front edge of your seat and your back should be supported. So one thing I'm gonna get you guys right to do right now is set yourself up that way. Even if you're not at your workstation, feel how it feels and your body is really exerting less energy. When we talk about the space between our knees and the chair, take our index fingers, two fingers or three, and make sure you can actually slide those fingers behind your kneecaps. If you can't, you might need to move a little bit more forward in your chair um, and that's okay. Um, if you can't support your back properly, see the gentleman um, on the right hand side, there is some space between the back of his chair and his, and his body. Um, we can fill that gap with a back support or a backrest. You see the picture on the bottom here is a back friend. It's one of my absolute favorite tools because it combines the seat rest and the backrest into one handy tool. Um, now practical tips, at home tips. Use a phone book or a package of printer paper if you do not have a footrest. And if you need to stack them a little bit higher, that's okay. Um, if you don't have a back support, roll up a towel and place it where you require more support. Using duct tape to secure it in place if you do not have a backrest is a really great idea. Now, before we start, um, before you attempt this exercise, take a picture of yourself in your work environment before making any adjustments. And then when we go through all of the suggestions, you'll be able to see the key difference in your body before and after. And hopefully you've achieved that BAN acronym, balanced, adjustable, and neutral. Now for your desk and your work surface, um, if you do not have a desk space to work at, and that's okay. Some of us are working from the kitchen table where I am right now. Um, some of us are working from the island. Some of us are working from the family room. You know what I mean? There's so many different types of workstations right now. At the end of the day, I, I, I really suggest to choose a flat surface that has enough space for all of your hardware, technology, and other materials necessary for your role. So really be sure to keep this area organized and clean. Choose a work surface that allows for your elbows to be at the same height as your keyboard. I mentioned that previously with the chair. Your wrist should be straight at all times and your hands in lines with your forearms. If you have different angles of your hands, that's going to lead to um, feelings of carpal tunnel syndrome, trigger finger, and could lead to numbness um, in your extremities. As previously mentioned, if your chair and desk combination do not allow for this neutrality, you may need a cushion to help you reach this desired height. Ensure that your forearms are supported and your shoulders are relaxed. That's my biggest thing. When I get stressed, my shoulders start to rise up. Um, so that's really one thing is we want to ensure that our forearms are supported so they don't cause our shoulders to creep up this way. Um, that's really important. Again, that neutral body uses less energy, which leads to less injuries. Use a wrist rest for more support. This is the same if you're sitting or standing. If you are standing, please use a cushioning mat for underneath your feet to take out some of that force. Um, now, just like sitting too long, standing too long is also not advisable. Um, standing should be done for no longer than 60 minutes. So this up and down sit to stand workstation, just remember, do not stand all day long. We want to make sure our body is adjustable, neutral, and balanced. Um, some practical tips for your desk and your work surface. Use a folded washcloth 
or towel, uh, dish towel, or two rectangular sponges if you do not have a wrist support. Um, instead of a cushioning mat while you're standing, you can use a folded yoga mat or a folded towel. Uh, you really wanna make sure you got something under your feet there to absorb some of that, um, that force. Now the keyboard and the mouse. This is also for me, the chair and the keyboard and the mouse are two things I really, really like to focus on. So make sure your elbows are still at the same height as your keyboard that we talked at before, that neutral body um, without our shoulders rising up. Place your mouse right next to your keyboard, not all the way out here. We don't wanna to put too much force on our shoulder or our elbow. We want, again, our body to be balanced. So how we are on the left side, we wanna be on the right side. So don't put your mouse all the way out here. We really want both sides of our body to be balanced and keep everything within reach. So for example, if you're an accountant and you need to have paper in front of you, um, make sure you get a little bit of an easel and you can bring that closer to you. So keep everything in reach. Your cell phone, whether it's um, papers you're working on, a notebook, you don't wanna reach all around and, and really put un unnecessary exertion on your body. So these are some great diagrams that I really like to demonstrate what a neutral body looks like. Um, you can see here the correct position. There is symmetry in the hand. So again, the hand is balanced. What's happening on the left is happening on the right. Um, so you can see that correct position with the mouse. You don't want your hand to be up and down like this using different mouse positions. Um, and you don't want your hands to be up and down using your keyboard. So really here, the picture on the bottom left is showing that tension that can happen to the shoulder if our mouse is too far away. So just keep everything within reach and as close to the body as possible. So your monitor and your screen. This one for me was a game changer. So traditionally, everybody had desktops. Laptops were never meant to be used as a consistent screen. They were meant for people who were traveling for work and, and moving here and there. Um, so if you do have a monitor or a larger screen, I strongly suggest hooking your laptop up to that and working off that as much as possible. Um, so the monitor height should create a neutral neck position, not like this, not like this. We want neutrality in the neck. So the neutral neck position when looking at the top row of the text on your screen. So you don't, again, you wanna make sure that your eyesight is in the right viewpoint. You're not looking down and you're not looking too far up. The monitor should be no farther away than an arm's length. So my tip is stick your hands out. If you can just graze your screen, that's the perfect amount. Now, obviously, if we're taller or we're shorter, all of that is relative. Um, and it's not so much the exact length that I'm worried about, but what's best for your body and your body size and your body type. So you can really see this gentleman here, whether he's sitting or standing, he's still following those same principles and his neck is neutral. The gentleman on the right hand side here shows a bunch of different positions of the monitor. Three of them are terrible. I, can I cannot tell you how many we see and observe of this nature. So also just really, really pay attention to the position of your monitor, whether it's not only the distance from your body, but the angle of the screen and all of that stuff is now adjustable. So don't forget about that. If you have access to an IT company uh, or an IT team and you can't figure out your technology, there are people in your organization who likely will be able to help you with this. If not, reach out to me and I can definitely help you with this as well. So the monitor screen. Most people now are using dual monitors. So whether that's two monitors or a monitor and a screen, it's very common practice. So if you are using dual monitors, place the monitor you use the most directly in front of you as if it were a single monitor. Place the secondary monitor to one side and at an angle in a half or semicircle, not too far away from the body. So you're straining your eye um, or your eyes or your crinking your neck, you really want them to be as close as possible as you can. Um, you may find one eye is more dominant than the other. So place that secondary monitor on the side with your more dominant eye. 
Um, if you're working on a laptop, uh, use a plug-in keyboard and raise the laptop up. I'm using a laptop right now on a laptop stand until you reach that neutral neck position. And that's one of the biggest changes that I've made was introducing a secondary monitor and raising up my laptop screen. So using the same guidelines for a plug-in keyboard and mouse um, as mentioned previously in this presentation. If you wear bifocals, raise the height of your monitor so that you can see the screen through the main lens. Do not view it through the lower lens. That's only going to cause an unneutral neck and really, really um, cause problems for you in the long run. So some practical tips. If you don't have a, a laptop riser um, or a laptop stand, you can use multiple packages of computer paper or a cardboard box to get your laptop at that desired height. Now your phone. How many of us are on the phone all day long? I know I am. Um, not many of us are using uh, landlines anymore. That being said, if you're working in a front office, administrative staff, um, working in a different office setting, there may be a cord phone that you are using. So avoid holding the phone to your ear for longer than five minutes. This position could not be worse for your body. Never use your shoulder to hold the phone in place. Um, and if possible, use a headset, headphones, or use the speaker function. So those are some of the biggest uh, suggestions I can have for your phone. Um, you can see the impact on the spine by holding um, the phone with your shoulder. And that's something that you really want to avoid. We even do that with our cell phones. So if you can't use your hands while talking on the phone, just use that speakerphone function. Um, it goes a long way. Or uh, earbuds, a lot of people are using those these days. Um, so whatever is most convenient for you, but really try not to hold that phone to your ear for longer than five minutes, if at all possible. Now workstation setup. Now this is a view into my workstation setup as soon as we were shut down uh, in this time last year, um, where I went from being in my office every day at the clinics to working from home. As you can see, what I'm using right now, again, a laptop. So before, you can see all of this unneutral body position. You can see unbalanced. You can see that I'm really, really stuck in my position. I'm not adjustable and I'm certainly not neutral. You can see that crink in my neck. I'm holding the phone with my shoulder. My eyes are looking down. Um, there's a significant space in the back of my chair. Uh, everything that could possibly be wrong with how I'm working is wrong. Um, but I made some really simple adjustments that didn't cost me any money. Um, and I'm gonna kind of take you through those right now. So the first thing I did was look at my chair. My kitchen table is not adjustable and neither was my chair. So I knew that I needed a seat rest and a backrest. And I have a great product called the Back Friend um, that has the combination, as I was mentioning before, of the backrest and the, the seat rest. So I put that in to achieve a proper position in my chair. And you can see that my feet were actually flat after that because I was in a better position. My elbows and my forearms are now neutral and my shoulders are, are far, far um, more in a, in a better position. And I have that neutral neck position. Everybody's ordering off Amazon. I grabbed a box that came in the mail and I popped my, uh, my laptop up on there. I got an external mouse and an external keyboard and I couldn't be happier. Um, started using my headphones for phone calls and things like that. So I didn't uh, bother my family. Um, and yes, this isn't an ideal work situation because I'm working in the kitchen, but I'm certainly in a far better position physically so that my body doesn't take too much energy working and I can really focus more on the task at hand and then enjoy my life outside of work as well. So I hope this gives you guys a bit of a demonstration as to what is achievable um, and how easy it can actually be. So the importance of posture, what you see may not actually be reality. Um, again, that's why I suggested taking a picture of before and then after, so you can really see the impacts on that posture. Bad habits, everybody has them, whether this is the effect of sports, activities, or everyday life. Um, these impact how we work as well. So it's not just looking at our workstation, it's look at, 
at looking at every single thing that we do. There's many different type of postural dysfunctions, but at the end of the day, a static posture leads to an overuse of postural muscles, which leads to fatigue, which leads to injury. So if we're not able to have that ban acronym all the time, acronym all the time, the balanced, adjustable, and neutral body, we get stuck in these positions. When we're stuck in certain positions, certain muscles are then overused or used for far longer than they should be. This causes muscles to get tired. And when muscles get tired, same within everything we do, we make mistakes or we hurt ourselves. So whether you have a swayed back, a lumbar lordosis, which is a tilting of the pelvis, a thoracic kyphosis, which is that rounded hump back or a forward head posture, or maybe a combination of all of these different things. It's really important to look at how you can achieve that neutral posture. And I'm going to go through some ways where you can help get, get to that because you can't do that just by building strength. You have to look at mobility as well. They kind of go together. So this is really where we talk about the importance of conditioning. When we have areas that are tight, they're usually related to areas that are weak um, and vice versa. So what we need to do then is loosen up those muscles and build strength at the same time. You can't do one without the other. And that's one thing that we're going to go over shortly. Posture is very much correlated to the body's alignment. Um, so you'll see here, the body is a series of joints and joints are meant to be mobile or stable. And they always are opposite of each other. So we start at the foundation and our ankles are very mobile, but our knees are stable. Our hip joints are, are mobile. Uh, our pelvis is mobile, but our spine is stable. We get to that upper spine, the thoracic spine, that is mobile because the body's moving, our upper extremities are moving, but our shoulders and our neck are meant to be stable. So if we come out of alignment and those switch, so our ankles become stable, knees become mobile, this is where we start to see a deterioration or injuries that leads to tightness and leads to weakness. So all of these things are a cascading effect. Um, they're definitely fixable, but it's something to be aware of. Um, again, you can't combat the stability and mobility issue if the body is not moving well and in a neutral position. So all of this stuff is related if you're starting to sense a theme. Again, good posture leads to better health feeling better, better communication, and you just feel better about yourself. Um, I can't tell how many times people say, oh, Robin, you look terrible today. And, and it comes down to having a really tight body or an injury or something that's just sort of holding you back. So good posture really does help you feel better in a lot of different ways. So now as we sort of get to the end here, I really want to talk, talk about some tips and tricks for productivity. <coughs> Excuse me. So while on conference calls, I encourage you to get up and stand up and walk around where if it's possible using that speakerphone function or your earbuds. Um, a simple way to adjust your body into a better posture is to imagine a string attached to the top of your head towards the back. That string is being pulled gently towards the sky the pull of the string lifts your chest, which will align your lower back and shoulders and head and neck. To remind yourself about this string uh, trick, put a sticky note on your monitor or somewhere visible on your desk with the word string. And every time you look at it, your body will kind of straighten up and get into that better position. Schedule body breaks and stretch, please. Um, wear blue light glasses while you work if you don't have access to a lot of natural light. Rest your eyes. Periodically looking at objects for several seconds at a distance will give your guys a break, or your eyes, not your guys, your eyes a break. So just look away for 10, 15, 20 seconds and let your eyes relax without trying to focus on something for too long. Sit by a window if possible. Natural light does wonders. 
stay hydrated. You just saw me taking a drink, stay hydrated. That's really important. So I have a few exercises that I thought might be helpful if time permits here. I know uh, we are kind of um, getting to 30 minutes. So I'll go through this relatively quickly so that I can answer some questions if there's any at the end. Um, there's a lot of different exercises you can do, um, but these are just a few general ones that will really help. Um, so thoracic extension against a sturdy chair. So I encourage you all to do this with me right now. So sit upright in a chair with a back support, clasp your hands together and move your arms towards the ceiling while simultaneously leaning backwards. Now you don't wanna to be too far from your chair. I'm gonna to go to the side. You want to be uh, leaning uh, with, your back, uh, with your back on the back of the chair and angle back like this. You'll feel a light stretch down the sides of your rib cage here. Your palms should face in towards one another and hold this position. So here's an example. You can either go up and down slowly, or you can hold it back there if you want a bit longer of a stretch. Now, one thing to note, don't let the head hang super back. You really want it to stay in line with those arms so you're not placing too much tension on the neck. That's a great one. So doing that maybe twice a day for 30 seconds, that would be a great start. Don't try to take on too, too much. Let's make sure that you guys develop positive habits and then we can advance from there. So exercise two, pelvic tilt in sitting position. So this is very similar to the cat dog um, type of yoga movement um, that we've seen that's on our hands and knees. So if you prefer to do it that way and you're comfortable with that yoga move, please feel free to do so. But this is a great one to do while on conference calls or responding to emails. So sit upright in your chair, your knees should be slightly lower than your hips and your feet flat on the floor. Place your hands on your hips and start in a slump position with your weight through your tailbone. Gradually roll yourself up from your tailbone until your weight is through your, your seat bones. Lift your head up and look straight. Sorry, I'm looking at the computer so you guys can see me. Um, and roll back into that slump position. So we really want to focus on a very small pelvic tilt. It doesn't need to be a huge exaggerated movement but we want to see some of that movement throughout our pelvis and our lumbar spine. And it really helps to alleviate some of that lower back pain that we might have. Again, this one, it's good to do this in consistent movement, not holding one position for too, too long, but please start with two 30 second uh, sessions throughout the day. Um, and if you're really finding it works for you, um, continue to, to add that in a little bit more. Movement is medicine. So this one, three, sitting to single leg standing. So this one helps with developing some lower body strength. It also gets some of that blood flowing throughout the day because if we're sitting in a static position for too long, that's not great either. So this one, whether you have an office chair, you want to use your desk, or you have great balance, but one thing to make sure is try this a few times with something to keep you steady um, so you don't end up falling. So we're going to if you've never done this before, start with two legs and we're just going to kind of stand up and down. A little bit of a lunge, a little bit of a squat situation. Um, if, if anybody is actively working out in the gym, 30 seconds up and down. If you want to make it a bit more challenging, put one foot out in front and stand up and down like this. That way we're developing a little bit more strength on either side of the body. And again, what you do on the right, always do on the left, up and down, up and down. If you're not comfortable with your balance at this point in time, that's definitely something my team can help you out with. Balance is critical in order to um, advance with this activity, but always make sure you have something to hold on to in case you aren't comfortable quite yet doing that movement. Wall angels. This one's great. Um, hopefully you guys can see me. So you're gonna stand with your back against the wall and bend your knees a little bit. Your shoulder and head should be touching the wall. Start with your upper arms at your side with your elbows bent. Your wrists and forearms should be touching the wall. Bring your arms up as high as you can without any of your body parts coming away from the wall. When you reach as far as you can, slide the arms back down to the starting position. So this one's similar to snow angels we used to do when we were kids, um, but wall angels are really great for activating that 
upper back and working on those shoulder, that shoulder strength that a lot of us suffer with rotator cuff issues and elbow issues. So it gets a lot of that stuff moving. So really start slow. This is not an exercise you need to do quickly, but it's about developing further range of motion with a neutral body. And the last one is a chin tuck. So this one can be done against a wall or simply sitting at your desk. So stand straight or sit straight, looking ahead and place two fingers on your chin and really push that chin back so we can create that neutral spine. And forward and back and forward. We don't want the rest of our body to move around. We really wanna keep it very isolated so we can really stretch out that back of our neck if we have an unneutral uh, position that we're trying to transition from. This can be done with holding it, or you can do it in isolated, shorter segments. So those are just some five great exercises that you can incorporate during your workday without getting up and disrupting uh, the rest of your productivity. At the end of the day, I know all of you are here because you want to be proactive. So there's a lot of different self-care strategies that we can use to work on posture, keep the body neutral, adjustable, and um, in a balanced position. So we've got posture management tools here on the left. The posture arch is something that 99% of our clients incorporate into their daily life. It helps us to stretch out that T-spine um, and it's something I really can't live without. There's also things like rollers and massage balls to get into some of those harder to reach places. There's ergonomic tools like the back friend I was talking about, um, obus form backrests, and then different um, wrist supports and mouse options depending on pre-existing health conditions. Again, the postural support, support while you work, we have a product called Align Med Posture Shirts. We also have posture bras. So for those ladies who do not wanna wear something as or, uh, like the t-shirt option, we do have that as well. And we have something a little bit less obtrusive called the Posture Medic. So there's lots of different things out there. And I was mentioning to Jason before we got started, really make sure that these products are going to help you achieve a balanced, neutral and adjustable body. Don't buy something just because you see it on TV or it works for a friend. When in doubt, get it checked out and ask a professional. That's why we are here. Injury prevention tips. Uh, this is the last little bit before I let you go on your way. Um, I really appreciate all of your attention tonight. It's been fantastic. At the end of the day, please take care of your physical, emotional, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual health, whatever that means for you. Be mindful and pay attention to your body. Stay active as much as you can, whether that's yoga, Pilates, going for walks with your kids, with your friends, with your family, virtual workouts, getting back into the gym now that we're able to. Eat a balanced diet. I don't know about you guys, but when I eat better, I sleep better, I feel better, and I'm more inclined to get active. Mobility is your best friend stretching, movement, and that flow throughout the body is really going to help with the stability and the mobility and the tightness and the weakness. Drink enough water, take breaks often, and stretch often, like I said. Vary your activities throughout the day. So if we're on a conference call, walk around, sit to stand workstations if you have one, or moving your workstation to somewhere where you can stand for a little bit. Seek out the help of a professional instead of using the internet to self-diagnose. That's a big one. When in doubt, get it checked out. Have an ongoing maintenance plan. We are often called the body mechanics, just like you take care of your vehicle. If you take care of your body with regular physical therapy, massage therapy, athletic therapy, whatever works for you, your body's going to go a lot longer without getting injured. We call it the tune-up. I can't tell you how many of our clients have adopted that preventative healthcare mindset and we are able to actually predict injuries before they happen and then you live a healthy active life and can do whatever you want in your spare time. At the end of the day, it comes down to being accountable. Building a better you is all about taking breaks and stretching often, varying your activities throughout the day, paying attention to your body, staying active, eating healthy, and getting proper sleep. Um, 
those are a few of the things that I stress no matter who I'm talking to. Um, obviously, there's certain situations that require a little bit more tailored plan, um, but those are five things that everybody, uh, no matter what you do, how old you are, um, anything like that, those are things that can help everybody thrive. So there's a special offer for you guys tonight for attending uh, this seminar. So I appreciate your time. Um, we are offering a virtual ergonomic assessment to anybody who's attended this Aurora Public Library event, which includes a biomechanical movement screen, which is how the body actually moves, um, a posture analysis, which we were talking about, a workstation analysis, a recommendation report, as well as discounted rates for any workstation enhancements. So don't go to Staples and pay a fortune for a chair that you're not quite sure if you need. Get advice to make sure it's the right one for you. Just because something says ergonomically friendly does not mean it's going to make an impact on your workstation. And just because something's expensive doesn't mean it's the best choice for your body. We have experience working with every different provider um, and we do have significant discounts for all office furniture, whether it's an off the shelf item or you need something custom, we can do it all. Um, so this regularly is $150 for the virtual ergonomic assessment. Today we are offering it for $100 to everybody on the call and that is going to be valid until the end of April. So that's a $50 savings. Um, so to redeem this offer, please send me an email um, with the subject webinar offer and we can definitely get this set up for you. This is all done virtually and I can't tell you how beneficial it is for a lot of our clients and they certainly um, have not uh, or ha have continued to thrive, feel more productive and experience less injury because of their work station. Now, I've probably talked for far too long. So if there's any questions, um, please feel free to ask now. If there is something you want to ask privately, please feel free to email me. Or if you'd like to book a follow up session, here is our booking link as well. That was a terrific presentation, Robin. Thanks for having me, guys. I'll give you a, a round of applause for everybody here. <laughs> Wonderful. And also got to say three thank yous for teaching us how to set up our office, our home office, how to uh, manage our posture and the stretches to um, that we can do to throughout our, our day uh, when we're working as well. So thank you for the three things that uh, you went over in your presentation. And we'll definitely keep in mind the B-A-N, the BAN uh, acronym to, for balance, adjustable, and neutral in mind. Awesome. And for sure, I'll be getting um, a pack of printer paper right after this to put under my, my laptop there. Perfect. Uh, and yeah. feel free to share your improvements with me. I love to see progress. And if something doesn't feel right, please reach out to ask a question. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. And I hope you have a great evening. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Robin? Hopefully I've answered them all for you guys. Um, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I just, um, it's not a question, but an experience and, and what you're saying substantiates it that like I got thrown in, into teaching at home. I'm an e ESL teacher for adults and you know, in the whole pandemic thing and um, but was sitting for almost a year and then just about a month ago, I did a um, like gerrymandered setup. So I was standing and it's so fantastic. Like I can't explain the difference of standing versus sitting. Oh, it's I'm so amazing. glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, it's just been, and I guess it might've been the right height because my body, although I still have the neck tightness with, I guess, looking down on phones and things, but just changing things is a very, very different um, experience. And also one thing to share as well is just because something is working today for your body doesn't mean that you shouldn't continue to evaluate your workstation. I constantly look at how I'm working and the impacts on my body every couple months, um, whether that's making adjustments in my workout routine or an injury that's happened or I slept weird and have a kink in my neck. Um, pay attention to how your body's feeling that day and make adjustments as you go. Um, that's one thing I would strongly recommend as well. 
Thanks, Robin. It was great. Thanks so much for coming, guys. I appreciate your time. Uh, where can we find the recording of the video? So Jason, I'm going to send it to you after this. Um, and then hopefully you and Bernadette can circulate that to everybody who registered. Um, and then it will also be uh, able to be found on our YouTube channel. Um, but I will send you the link to share with everybody afterwards. That sounds, uh, that sounds awesome. Perfect. Thank you again, Robin. Thanks so much. Have a great evening.